Let's work a little bit at what you've been doing so far. I wanted to hear the repeat. Uh, I, firstly, I wanted them to warm up. And I think you've, you've, you're getting accustomed to playing it here. It's wonderful playing. I'm just going to move up here. Um, so when you do a repeat like this, which everybody expects, and indeed there's a development repeat. We were talking about that. The second, uh, you get a second chance at both, uh, both sections. Um, I was on the lookout to see what you might do differently. And I didn't hear that much in terms of nuance of timing and of, 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 of expression. And what I'm hoping for is that you can bring, as a general comment, a more improvisatory feeling to this extraordinary piece. Um, now, when you, when you force something to be enriched with a nuance and you write in your part, oh, we're going to take time here, or we're going to do a little subito here, or there are lots of things as performers that we can do. None of those things should be sort of uh, broadcast in, in, a, in a manufactured way. So it's almost uh, counterproductive for me to say, 
do this here and do that there. It has to come organically out of your feeling about, about the piece. So in the most natural way possible, let's look for ways in which Mozart might be playing tricks on us as players and on the listener, and ways in which he might be leading us in different directions. I, I thought of several things you could do. For example, when you have this wonderful line at 99 that takes us back, your crescendo can develop at different rates. And you could start softer and reduce the amount of crescendo, uh, resist the urge to crescendo so soon. And you can change your, yep, up, up, B. You hear a lot of these eighth notes right from the beginning of the piece. So the eighth notes that you see that, that come all the way through this movement, they shouldn't all, all be the same. The bow stroke can be different and the, the way in which you pace, if you like, the, the timing of everything. So I'd love to try to get you to play more freely. For example, when you have those 16th note runs, uh, there's nothing to stop you from playing with great virtuosity there. And, 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 and the three of you should be able to follow him without him feeling inhibited in any way. I didn't quite get that sense of, of freedom. Uh, so let's try working a little bit. Well, by the way, just for the audience, um, the other thing to mention about this piece, that it, because it has a name, and the name is so specific to the um, introduction, do you know a little bit about the way this piece was received when it was first played? <laughs> I'm sure you've done all the reading. So did it, did it go down well? Did people, <laughs> right? Yeah, I mean, the, the story that I like the most is of the Italian um, company that bought a set of parts and returned them because they were so flummoxed. They thought it was full of wrong notes because the music is so chromatic. And in the G minor viola quintet, written later, which is one of the most sublime pieces, uh, the critic wrote, it's too spicy. We, we just, there must be something wrong. And of course, Haydn, who was 24 years his senior, said if, Beta, if, if Mozart wrote it, he must surely have meant it. So what I'd like to get is the feeling of, of the music being heard as if it's for the first time. And that's very difficult to do when you're being studious and trying to be good musicians. But so you've got to play it in a way that evokes that initial reaction of, of wonderment and of puzzlement, maybe. So where should we start? Um, let's try a little bit from the beginning of the Adagio, and then we'll go to the, to the Allegro. Okay, good, good. It's very nice. Um, what's the most foreign mode in the opening? Things, things go pretty well right at the beginning. Well, we don't quite know where we are yet. I would say it's your note that is the unusual one. So maybe you could think of, I know it's not pianissimo, but we need to create some, a special kind of atmosphere here. I would say it's, it's nice to use vibrato, but that might, could you be a little bit more sparing and, and really find a color that surprises us more when you, when you enter? Should we try the beginning again? Okay, that's good. I think you capture um, a certain quality which is good, but don't forget that the music has to breathe. It's, it's an adagio and there's a sense of ongoing breathing with these notes here. So try not to, to let it get too static. I know you want, you want to get the atmosphere, but it doesn't help the, the general line. Breathe. Keep, keep pulsing. Good, now try, try, try slower bow. Keep it moving. That's good, good. Now, try, try the opening again. I don't want to get too uh, uh, finicky about the sound color in the cello line. I'm sorry, I'm standing behind you. Try starting with even less vibrato at the beginning and let the bow do the work. 
And then you can change the character here. We talked about the importance of the eighth notes. Keep it quieter with the left hand. And when you see the crescendo, then you can open out more there. Try that. Just a little bit. Not, not exactly dead, but just, just a little. And now open the sound up. He writes forte twice. Uh, do you think they, they should be the same? Dee da da dee, da dee da dee. No, maybe not. <laughs> so I would say, again, when you, when you look at the score, it's not enough to say, oh, it's what you have to think, which, what, which key are we in? Where are we in the introduction? So maybe this one, I would say, is a little bit less forceful. Maybe gravitating towards more pathos than intensity. Just think about that. So d don't just let the dynamic di dictate your, your playing. It's, it's a feeling of a reaction to the harmony. Let's try that, shall we? From uh, bar five. Keep it subtly moving. Disappearing or new color. Yes, good, yeah, yeah. And this wonderful clash here, this would have been one of those places that nobody would have understood what was going on. Could you try to play that with a, a sound color that is le maybe less, less easily digested? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's, it sounds very nice, but I think there's more intensity of a quiet kind here. Can we try that again? How about going from um, uh, bar nine? These wonderful suspensions. Descending line, less. Low point. And then quick crescendo. More direction. Clash. Viola line. That's good. I see two two steps there. Yadi da di ta di da di. Maybe you could go away from the second one more. That's a, a nuance. I mean, he didn't write anything there, but one feels it. Da di da dum. You can look at the way that the second violin line is 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 written there. I think to me that shows a step down. Can we go from that bar from sixteen? From di. Yeah, yeah, you see the sort sandy. They could be different. Tari, tari, tari. Not exactly the same. Try again. Good. Lowest one, darker. 
good. And here, the first time, you have the marking with the, the slurs and the dots. Tum, hum, bum. They shouldn't sound like tum, hum, bum at the beginning. It's a different marking. Maybe those could be more in a, softly, but slightly more restless. Tum, bum, bum. Not so stationary. Should we try that uh, from uh, 19? Longer. That's good, yeah. Now, it's hard when we stop and we talk, but I wonder, when you first played this, I, I wondered if there would be any way to create a sense of um, not knowing where we're going to go, to highlight the contrast in this very chromatic uh, introduction, which sets a, a most amazing atmosphere. And then how do we get into this uh, allegro, which is so sunny and so contrasting? I wonder, let's try the last two bars and do that little turn as freely as you wish, and keep, keep concentrating on that long note so that it doesn't just die. And then the timing, whatever you wish, as, as free as you can. Now try it differently. Do that bar. Do the upbeat. Different, different timing with the, with the ornament. Do it later. Hold it. Now, quick change of mood. That's good. Okay, good. Sorry, stop. Very. It's amazing, isn't it? This t da 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 di is basically born out of t da da di. So it's a. Uh, uh, a completely different take on that initially very obscure sounding uh, motif. The eighth notes underneath, I, they're nice, but I think they can, you can change them to reflect what's going on in the melody a little bit more. I said when I was listening, it's very clear, but it needs to, you need to shape it more so that you're gonna help him in turn phrase and shape more. Let's try that from the, right from the Allegro. That's it. That's good, yeah. 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 Sorry to stop you. I, I, we all love that little chromaticism, the, the F sharp and the F natural, but if you take so much time, it's harder for the cello to come in. And you did it both times, first time and on the repeat. Try doing it straight through once. Can we go from uh, bar 27? Yeah. That's good, yeah. And let's have a, let's have a real subito, subito forte there. He writes it there, and I think your first arpeggio could be much more joyful in the cello line. Same place? Good, okay, good, yeah. We talked about the improvisatory quality needed. Can you really be surprised by the subito piano in, in 38? The two, two sorts Andy, and then suddenly the piano. How about going from the forte? And try to make this sound uh, at 30, uh, 31, when we hear the forte statement. I, I have to be careful with the adjective I would use here, but what kind of forte are you looking for here in terms of the character? Give me some adjectives. <laughs> yes, joyous, anything else? Warm. Warm, good. So try to make sure that when you think, there are hundreds of different kinds of forte, all based on the key 
the nature of the theme, where we are in the piece. Um, so don't just resort to, oh, this is my loud sound, this is my happy sound, which is straight bow, good vibrato, do you know what I mean? It has to have that kind of, I shouldn't talk in these sort of generic terms, but that kind of Mozartian lightness maybe, but it, need, it needs to have that joy without being too thick. I always like to uh, imagine that the transparency of, 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 a, of, a, of a texture like this, rather than just the richness. Let's try it, shall we? Uh, go again from 27. Yeah, good. Hannah, could you give a little bit of ya da dee da dee, a little extra something there? No surprise. That's good, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, hey, it all counts. Sometimes we have to talk about the technique, but ti da da da, ti ba da da dee. You lighten that up a little bit. Try it. Just right there at the forte. Yes. And more. Good. Okay, good. I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't hit the downbeat of 35. Try not hitting the downbeat of 35 so much. Try the same from the forte. More this time. Uh, subito. Okay, good. Yeah. What's the what's the character here? Yeah, good. I think you could. Maybe it's not so much you, but it's Or oh, sorry, it's the quarter notes. Could you try those a little lighter, less weighty, so we feel it less by the beat, but. Let's try that, should we, from the sub subito piano, 38. Crescendo, light. Okay, good, yeah. Try to make sure, if they're playing in the upper half of the bow, in, your, in the lower half, maybe consider matching. Can we just hear the quarter notes, the low, lower three? Yes, yeah. I would say lighten the stroke even more. And then you said playful. It'll, it'll help that. Can we try there? Let's try from, let's do the, the piano again. Uh, 38. Crescendo. Light. Good. Away. Away. And now subito. Okay, good, yeah, yeah. Special kind of, who said joyful, did you say? Yeah. <laughs> Extra special amount of joy here. We've modulated. Um, maybe you could bring out the crescendo in 47 a little bit more. And let's start lower. Do you, do you break this slow here? Da, 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 dee, da. I don't know, Yeah, yeah, I heard it. Da, 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 dee, ba. Da, 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 dee, da. <laughs> I would try, I would leave that slow in. Should we go right there? Let's go from the forte. Ya, da, dee, da, 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 da. Yeah, one of my favorite lines here is the viola. You're isolated a bit because um, you're playing together here. There's a, there's a little bit too much rivalry, so you maybe you have to play a little more there, Hannah. It's beautiful, it comes from pop, 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 pop. It's an imitation of her arpeggio at the beginning. Good, yeah, okay, good, yeah. I would, a little detail, I would revel in that little ornament. It's a lovely, charming little little dee, but of course Mozart, it was his instrument, right, the viola. Yeah. Bring that out a little bit more. Could you be a little bit more dee, da, 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 dee? It's like a sort of private version of the theme in forte. Right there? Uh, let's just, yeah, sorry, the same place, 43. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, could you really feel the octave? You know, when you play cello lines in Mozart, Haydn, uh, Beethoven, Schubert, sometimes, well, what you should do is listen to the great, the great pianists and the way that the left hand, which seems something like as innocent as an octave, when we play it on the cello line in that string quartet, we, because we don't get the melody very often, <laughs> that's all we have. We either have yum pum 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 pum, or we'll have things like this, which are very important. You see, you have an octave with a sorsando on, and you've got to feel that, the, the interval more strongly, because it, it's texture. Can we just try that right there? Really enjoy the octave. Everybody, same place? <laughs> How about waiting a little bit? Wait, wait a little bit before you go on. Same place. A little too much. Still cut the difference. <laughs> Crescendo. Yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah, a little variation becomes Can you give it more sparkle there? Right there? Should we go from there? That's good, yeah. You do it very well, but I think you could be more surprised by that. You know, it's very interesting. There's a great quote, uh, which I've always, I always repeat this to myself. Alfred Brendel, somebody asked him, what's it like performing on stage? And he said, it's three things always. I'm thinking about what I just did. I'm thinking about what I'm doing right now. I'm also thinking about what's happening next, and, and in, in varying degrees. So if you're there and you really want to play that piano, you've got to be surprised by it. So is there any way you could find, find it, either with timing or with sound or character, that you could really, really absolutely enjoy that? Really taste it at 51. Let's do the forte again, uh, 49. Okay, good, good, good. Maybe uh, we need to lighten up a little bit for him with the downbeat of 51. Yeah, good luck. I would, with more alacrity in 52, you're on the wrong, wrong beat. It's mischief making. This couldn't really have happened without Haydn. So make sure you really give it some energy at 52. Let's do the piano, 51. Okay, good. Yeah, I like the time very much. Have you ever tried not doing that timing there? Because you did it both times. <laughs> you play with it. Yum, yum, bum, bum, yum. And then wait longer. And roll your quarters however you wish after that. Let's go from 53. Okay, good. Now. Just play the chord, play the chord. Let's try it three or four different ways, just alone. Good, now try rolling it faster. Now even faster. And then, yeah, and really shine on that top note. Can we just try something you've never done before there with the, with the rolling? Let's, try, let's go into it. Go, and have more fun with the Middle voices could have more fun there. Let's try again from the same place, 53. Yeah, good. Could you could you really be a fiddler at fifty-eight? Should we do the chord again? Fifty right at fifty-six. Now, surprise. Ah, it's softer. More. Less. Low point. Drive it. Surprise.
That's good, good. You remember in the film Amadeus when somebody objects to one of the pieces and says, there are just too many notes. And Mozart says, there are precisely enough notes. No, there are too many notes. Don't be apologetic about these runs. Play delight in it all. Let's try 68 and give us everything you can. It's, it's a violin concerto here. 68. That's good, yeah, yeah. Adjectives for character here. Yum, bum, bum. Charming, yeah. So maybe you could experiment with the timing. Yum, bum, bum. Take a little time if you wish. Uh, Barber for bar 70. Okay, good. Yeah, final thing is, this is a very, uh, again, rather uh, detail here, but uh, at 95, you have eight notes in the cello line. So if you sometimes only look at the melody or the fragments of melody, da 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 it depends what's supporting it sometimes to give you a clue how to play it. But these notes here sounded quite heavy. Dom, bom, bim, ba. And where are we in the piece? He's musing on this theme, dee, da dee, da dee, da dee, da da. So maybe lighter at, at 95. And I notice your group has a tendency sometimes to play with the vertical rather than dee, da 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 dee. So lighten them up, yum, bum, beam, especially when you go to the higher register. So, you know, again, cello playing in a string quartet is, is finding the interest in these simple accompanimental lines that makes such a big difference to how everything else will sound around it. We're almost out of time, let's try that, shall we? Even the pedal notes at, at 91 you can play, maybe brush them a little bit more. Let's try 91. <laughs> That's good, yeah. I could show you something here. I just borrow your cello, wolf. But if you play, you could play um, any number of ways with. And then. There's many possibilities within that piece of wood. So don't, don't stick to the same part of the boat. Should you try that right there? Light. Low point. Keep leading. Go on. Good, okay, good, wonderful. Now, this, we have to finish, but I'd just like the audience to hear the very end of this piece, because it's the most miraculous, isn't it? Let's go on to the code, where was it? Yes, could you, could you try from 211 for us? And do the coda?
beautiful. And just, just remember that um, he does write more dynamics than you would normally find in many of his pieces. You have to really end even more softly if you wish. What an amazing piece. And think about doing the second repeat too. It's much more difficult because uh, the audience, we hear these melodies again, so it's up to you to find the differences in the most natural way you can. They're there, they're there to be exploited in, in the right way. So maybe above all else, I want you to feel free to rediscover the piece so that um, it, as if you're playing it for the very first time. It's, it sounds like a very simple thing to say, but how many times do we hear this piece? And how many times has it been played in all kinds of different venues for different uh, reasons? But uh, give it its due and try to, try to find as many of those nuances as you can. Great, bravo, very fine playing. Thank you.
Very good playing. Congratulations, both of you. Um, I think I should, uh, we have limited time, so I'll, I'm trying to gather my thoughts and think what could be of most value to you from just hearing you for the first time. And, and I think most of the things that I would like to say would be how to, well, there are several things, but much of the time the adrenaline that, that just there's a sort of a kind of a, an outpouring of adrenaline from the very first note of this piece, and it seems to just go on for the whole movement, and um, and you need that. You absolutely can't play this music without that kind of sense of. I mean, this Allegro Vivace. This this is a wonderful piece because when you play, I'm sure you play the first sonata in E minor. It's as if Brahms discovered the A string of the cello, <laughs> and instead of being submerged between the hands of the pianist, you're absolutely on the A string, you're liberated. So that's great. On the other hand, uh, there are places where the piano part, and you did marvelously, I mean, it's fantastic playing, very athletic and, and, and facile, and you need that too. But I think you're almost pushing her sometimes to do things that are not so uh, easily done. And for one, not just to say that it's a practical thing to play cleanly, but musically, so I guess, the two words I would tell, tell you above any other would be intervallic tension or intervallic relationships. Yeah. And you start with that right from the beginning. And with Brahms, he's the ultimate, like Haydn, Mozart, he recycles the motif and it's constantly coming in different forms. And it's up to you as a performer to illuminate everything that we see in this quite complicated score uh, so that we can all hear it. Um, I'll give you one small example. Do you have bar numbers? Okay. Can you play from bar 203? Okay, good, good now. So where is the line here? 
half of it's in the piano, but the first part is yours. Oh, yeah. You have this step here. Can you, can you bring out and then she answers you. So together you make that phrase. I know there's something in the right hand of the piano, but yeah. can you bring that out because it's motivic. And the piano finishes. You see what I mean? Yeah, so that's a, a small example. Another place would be in 187. Uh, having mentioned the fact that he has you on the A string, there's one place where you have the theme, and it's in the worst register for us as cellists. The Bermuda Triangle is anywhere here in the, D, the G and the D string. So, I know he wrote Piano Espressivo, and he was kind enough to give the piano uh, part a dolce piano, but, but you have to play that more, otherwise we don't hear da di da da di dum, and the piano sounds da it's so bright. Can you make sure you play that louder for us, uh, clearer, and sing it like it's from ba-bum, ba -bum, but it's been transformed. Can we really hear that? Let's go from, um, uh, that's a good place. Uh, there's a big chord at uh, 178. Let's try from there. Okay, good. Now, now I hear a little bit more of the lines. Now that brings up a couple of other things. Could you make sure that when you have a long note and there's something happening with the piano and she comes down as she does in 180, 181, yeah. don't, don't sit there playing like it's Dvorak and Cello. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so your long notes have to correspond with what's going on in the piano part. Just, and, uh, and again, intervallic relationships. Da -dee, ba -ba. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't play da -dee, da -da, da -dee, ta da 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 they don't all have to be exactly the same, because it's different characters. Should we try it there again? Yeah, how about you're going across three octaves. Yari, baba. I would play out more, much more. Yeah, clear there. Should we do that bar there? And when he asks you to roll the chord, there's lots of rolled chords. Have you seen, you've noticed that? It's as if you were apologizing for the fact that they were, heavy. oh, I'm sorry, I need a little more time. It's a, we know from, from people that played with Brahms and there's lots of correspondence, he, he writes these rolled chords often. It's part of, it's got a, a turbulent quality to it. Take your time. Let's do that again from 178. <laughs> Yeah, taking even, even more time. Really take your time there. Good, good, yeah, yeah, yeah. And maybe just thin out a little bit. I'm just looking after you here. Thin out a little bit. Come away more. It's like a big thunderclap and then it just disappears into the distance. More time. Yes, keep it, keep it. And then diminuendo. Sing out. Okay, beautiful, great. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about earlier on. So, this piece demands uh, um, uh, adrenaline, overflowing adrenaline, but it has to be controlled in a way. I had the feeling that you were a little breathless. Yeah. There are these places where you, you have to breathe. Yeah. Musically very important that you breathe. Um, I'm trying to think of the first time I really felt that, but uh, look at bar 48. The piano has to go ya da da dee da da dee da da ya ba 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 bum. That gap, dee da da, going from here to here is what you have to feel. And you have a four-note chord, but you yeah. went thumb, bum, bum, bum. Yeah. It doesn't help that leap in the piano. So you can't just look at the cello line yeah. like it's a solo bass line. You can't do that, because look what's happening around you. Yeah. Let's try that, shall we? Should we go from when you have the 
Second subject at 40. Darim ki. Good, yeah, let's give that one more. Okay, he rolls that one in the left hand of the piano. Ya da da da, F sharp. Take a little time if you wish. I don't quite hear this crescendo. It goes all the way to the forte there. Do the same. Try, could you try a bowing? Try down bow retake once. Try that once. That's good. Yeah. And let it ring more. And whenever the piano plays that, could you just play it first when the piano has it? Yeah, yeah. The chords are so bright. So more bow speed, let it ring, let, use the acoustic. Yeah, you uh, play it again on the piano first, would you? Yeah, I wouldn't mind a little bit more separation when you play it. Da ya ba. It's the whole idea is that the second beat is is more important. Lift it more. Good. Yeah. Can we really hear? Can we really hear the? Sorry. Really hear the open G string. You need more of that. Yes. So roll it faster. Da ya ba. Shadow, huge shining. Okay, good, yeah. Okay. Sorry. This is one of those places where I was thinking, yes, energy and, and, and enthusiasm, you have that in spades, it's wonderful, but when you have ti da dum ti da dum and then it's not over and you use the whole bow ti ta ta ti da and then she has to continue. So if you use the whole bow for every note, yeah, you're not giving the phrase a chance. Di da da di di da we could call it a condition whole bow itis <laughs> where you everybody wants to use the whole bow all the time because you want to get the sound out, but you've got a phrase as well. Can we go from your di da dum? Now more. Now more bow. Let's breathe a bit. Wouldn't that be nice? Da 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 dam ba. Arrival. You can go storming all the way through the first page, and it sounds really great, but. But I think for the piano part there, it yeah. needs some time probably. Yeah, let's try somewhere around there, shall we? And we'll, we'll just take the repeat. Where are we? Uh, how, how about going from 56? we did before with the bariolage. The bariolage is this, it's very Brahmsian. Yeah. <laughs> yes, can you give us the line a little bit more? Just try right, just try right there. Is there any way you could give us a little bit, can I try to embarrass myself, but I, I like it very much. There are lots of ways to do this. Some cellists. I think the sounds go right. Yeah. Because when the piano plays at the beginning, I hear you hear the sixes very clearly. Yeah. But with the cello, you just hear a kind of cacophony sometimes. <laughs> For me, that kind of intensity of rhythm really helps and look at all the other 
Brahms pieces, you know, the G major string quintet. Uh, there's, there's much of that for pages upon pages of it. So give it as much definition as you can. Right there? Okay, that's good, good. Now, it's a very subtle thing, but um, Brahms is always very, very particular about I mean, everything. And the markings in the score. Mm -hmm. um, can you show me where the one and only Sforzandissimo, Fortissimo is in the, in the whole movement? Because there's only one. See, 92. So, again, you have to give the impression, what, what, what uh, character do you feel is most important here in the beginning? But he, that would be the whole, the whole kind of face of it. The character, the character of the music. Yes, yes. So, um, when you talk yourself through the characters, if you're an actor and you're looking at a text and you don't quite know mm -hmm. where you are in the play or you're trying to unravel the inner, inner sort of feelings of the character, let's say this is a character. If you say that it's heroic, then a hero here shouldn't be struggling too much. But the, the, the paradox is that you do struggle to play it. We know that as a cellist, <laughs> as a pianist too. So I, with the forte and the key, you've got to be able to somehow comfortably rise above the technique and the challenge of the technique. I see you tightening up just a little bit here. So try to play with the, the freest possible sounds you can and know that there's always going to be more left. So in other words, you're not giving a hundred. You, you are, of course, to, yeah, yeah. to express, but you can't be at breaking point. So let's try the opening and, and heroic and strong and, and joyful too mm -hmm. and excited, but you're not being squashed by it. <laughs> Good. Now, if you give the upbeats yabba, a little more character. Are they all the same? Da -dee, da -da, da -da. So, if you. Yeah, tell me, but uh, I'm not just trying to interrogate you. If you were to sing it, yadi, jira, and then. Da -da. Da -da. That's a more comfortable, inter well, not comfortable. It's yeah. a reassuring interval. Yeah. It's cellistically reassuring too. <laughs> Let's try to give the opening. So make them different. Yeah, good. I'm not sure you quite feel the big beats. It's a launch pad and it's on the wrong beat. So you can't just da da, da ba ba. It has to be a sort of a, a rebound from the piano where you have the little accents. just getting comfy when you ran through but this time you were you took a little more time as you went to the high D yeah. I mean, I'm sure I don't have to tell you that but you you just you're more at ease now but that's what you try, got to try to get when the adrenaline is so about to take your whole body over you know you try to, and what happens is you don't have the time that you want so practice study so you're spreading this way rather than you know what I mean? So let's go from from that low point. Yeah, good, yeah. And then give it a little bit more energy when you have the higher version. Um, it's good. Be careful. That's rhythmic. Same thing. Yeah, good, yeah. But you have to respond to what the piano does there. If you get octaves in the left hand, dotim, bam, and you back off. I'm not sure that's what he's telling you to do there. I wonder about that. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have. 
Having said that, do you have it in an email? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So make sure here, yes, that's where I don't want you to do the innuendo. Yeah. He writes it a little bit later. Yeah. Could you go from the top, buddy? Yeah. Is that a good place to go from? Um. All right, yeah. Your left hand is telling me that you're getting louder. Maybe, again, you need the exciting vibrato, but you also need to, it, the vibrato needs to change with the character. Yeah. Can we go from Relax. lovely, but make sure you remember that this phrase keeps it's continuing. Right. It's lovely to enjoy, oh, but somebody else has to carry on and then you do. <laughs> so uh, it's, yes, I think again about the long line that you make together. Let's go from Okay, good, yeah. Is there a reason why you don't vibrate the G at the peak of the phrase? Because this is your fourth and weakest <laughs> finger. <laughs> so, how would you practice that? Yeah, or, um, yes, I think it's very important that you're able to say two things to yourself. When necessary, mm -hmm. I can vibrate equally well on every note. Mm -hmm. I can also vary it. Mm -hmm. There are those rare occasions when you might, you might not choose to use vibrato, but you must be in the driving seat. Yesterday, in the dress rehearsal for the Smetana, I was vibrating and Sasha wasn't. Mm -hmm. And it was commented on in the, in the dress rehearsal. And I suddenly thought, yeah, we'd agreed not to vibrate there, and I'd forgotten. Or it was just doing its thing and I wasn't aware of it. Yeah. When you're growing up and you have these tendencies, you've got to be in the driving seat. Yeah. So it can't just do its thing. I mean, ultimately, it does it without thinking. Of course, all the great players get to that level where it's just, it's uh, organic. Yeah. But don't fall into the trap of da dee da most expressive note, da. <laughs> you know. yeah. Let's try again. New color. Keep going. That's good. Yeah. Where do we hear that A flat before? Yeah. Right, this interval, the half step. Yeah. I think it was a little too vague. That half step. Yeah, thematically. I would say that that should be highlighted a bit more. Okay. Can we go from um, somewhere around there? Of this, do you think? Da -de -in -de -bum -bum. I hear kind of mobile. Okay, good, good. Yeah, maybe you could play just a little bit more richness. Da -de -in -ba. How about going for the A flat? Yeah, yeah, good. Can you can you keep it going all the way until here? De -da -de -in. Okay. So She's got the pickup. Keep going with the pickup, and then off. Two, three, one, sustain, two and three, and bam, bam, yeah, yeah, but can you, again, she's got to uh, give you that wonderful springboard, like at the beginning, the same thing here, okay, great, that's 
that's better. So the two of you are reacting more closely together. Now let's do that. Let's go from the um, second ending. Da dee da dee da da, the triplet. story about this piece when it was first played with uh, Robert Hausman, who played it for, with Brahms. And after a couple of measures, apparently he stopped and said, hey, Dr. Brahms, I, I can't hear myself. It's so loud. The piano part's so loud. And, Bra and Brahms replied, oh, how lucky for you. <laughs> and whenever we, play, whenever we play this chord here, I always think the same thing. Um, but there comes that time, this is, the, this is the, one of the high, I, you know, he wrote this piece when he was on holiday in Lake Thun in Switzerland. Uh, many other pieces came from that period. And you can see from the scenery, this kind of mountain, uh, mountainous terrain, there's a sort of uh, a sweeping kind of, uh, very, it's a very evocative, and it's right here in the music. So when you have that, it's, for me, uh, I, I shouldn't impose my idea of my, my imagination, but for me it's a clap, a clap of thunder, maybe, or something extremely powerful, but then suddenly dissipates, you've got sforzandissimo to pianissimo here. So I would pro prolong the crescendo, start lower, and then give this as much as you can at 92, maybe with time. Let's try it, shall we? Uh, more presence there, remember? More. Bermuda Triangle, can't hear yeah. you quite there. And he does mean it, pianissimo sempre. Let's go from um, the middle of bar 81, the cello. <laughs> okay, good, good. good. So don't, don't take the chromaticism for granted. We were just doing the, the Mozart um, uh, quartet. Uh, it's nothing is routine about this passage. Yes, yes, good, yeah, yeah. When you see these little swells here, da 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 nothing, no, the audience doesn't know this, but you can show them. No swell, no swell, little swell. Mm -hmm. So if your vibrato's going like this the whole time, and the bow too, could you do me a favor? Try this bowing. Da 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 Do the original. Try it. Yeah. Less. A little more. Lowest. Low point. Dialogue. Good. Could you make more noise? <laughs> you were right there with the piano, right the downbeat. Yes. Maybe you need a little bit more attack. Can I show you? I, I, I mean, the piano, just play that chord for us. Yeah, yeah. So you may need more. And really hear the. Station there. Less vertical, just from the string. I, can, can you you could make a big show of it and just, <laughs> but whatever gets the most noise. Whatever so practice, I mean, it could be here or that. You just have to find what makes the equal of the piano there. And try not to end up like uh, Robert Hausman. <laughs> Can't hear myself. <laughs> Good, let's go, let's go into it now. Should we go over here? 88. Dynamic yet. 
That's where you're going. I'm hearing da da dee da dee da da. You're not saving self room. It's a little bit like driving too fast. You're, you're less able to react quickly to something that might happen in front of you. So don't force yourself to play so loud here. It's got to go all the way there. Let's both keep it down a bit. <laughs> softest moment in the movement. It's as if all that terrible bad weather has now just dissipated and things are very calm, very serene. It's about as far away from here or the first page or the ending as you could get. Yeah. So maybe this could be even more hushed. You have to make a magical atmosphere here. Somehow you have to bring the audience in. Most of the time you've been proclaiming as a hero. <laughs> and here you have to bring, you have to make the room really small. <laughs> and that's, how do we do that? Yeah. Focus of uh, concentration, sound quality, timing. You, you're having to project very hard this sense of intimacy. Let's try from um, the peak. Let's go from here. We'll finish in one second. 104. Poco crescendo, poco crescendo. <laughs> oh, it was very beautiful. You managed to create that atmosphere. I'm sorry, we've run out of time, but um, wonderful playing. So just think about pacing and, uh, and try to think more of, about the dialogue between the two of you. Bravo, wonderful, Thank really you. great. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wonderful, really great.
Bravo, very, very well played. <clears throat> so this is a uh, very fine work, and you you take it on one of the really war horses of the repertoire. So, bravo. Um, how long have you been working at it? Since September. Great. Well, it's um, it's a piece that is, of course, very. Uh, it's sort of like the. Mount Everest or the K2, there are pieces such as Schubert G Major and all of the late Beethoven quartets that uh, you will be living with them forever and we'll be thinking about them all the time and every time we revisit, I mean I haven't played this piece for about five years and I, I'm listening and finding new things in it as you play it. Um, so uh, there are lots of details in the score, we were looking at the Mozart Dissonant Quartet at the beginning of the uh, session and and we were talking about how, it, even for Mozart, he marks that score quite meticulously, I mean, with, with more crescendo diminuendo, more, more dynamics. Late Haydn quartets have much more. If you look at Opus 20, there's almost nothing. 33, 76, and finally you get to 77, there's lots of markings. Now this has, it's a whole new ball game of <coughs> meticulous planning, and I'm, sh I, I'm imagining that for somebody that has this cataclysmic event where a, a great pianist composer is unable to hear any longer. There's that wonderful account of how he's following a group. It's the Chopinzig Quartet playing, and he's shouting orders at them because he can tell the tempo is not right just from looking at their yeah. movements, their gestures and fingers. Um, so there's so much information in the score, and we, the audience, we don't know that. We we just uh, we follow along and we respond instinctively. And many of us know the piece, and some of us don't. And I remember the first time I played this piece, I couldn't believe how much was written in the score. So um, your job, I think, is to work at that and to digest all of that. And then it has to come out in a narrative in this movement. All the details, the subitos, the morendos, the tenoramente, all of those markings have to come out in a, in a fluid way. What now I, I hear is a little bit that you're still trying to get a conception, um, a, a sweep to the first movement. Um, and I, I want you to feel a little bit less um, bogged down by some of the written instructions. You, you have to finally move beyond that. I'll give you a good example. Uh, do you have bar numbers or you have the letters? Oh, great, great. Okay, it won't take us half an hour to find where we are. Where is it where you have yum, bum, 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 yum, the second time? Uh, is that, oh yeah, I found it. It was at K. Yes, let's, yeah, good. Could we possibly try from, uh, from I, and let's see if we can trace a more coherent path from I until just after the, the our tempo to see if we can feel the onward sweep of the movement rather than getting bogged down. Yeah, he, he writes non legato. But what I'm hearing is you do what he writes in a way, but I hear you getting bogged down in the execution of the scale. I'd rather hear then we break and you answer. It sounds too noty at the moment. And also that's one shape in one bar. But I'm hearing smoother. Try it. Good, good, yeah, good. Now, you can play a little bit more uh, Dolce character. You have Dolce and the audience have to know you have Tenoramente. It's a very special marking. He doesn't use it very often. One of the cello sonatas, Opus 102, number one, C major. There's a beautiful Tenoramente in 127. There's the same. Very special sound. Personal. <laughs> Now move. Keep moving. Moving. Okay, good. So this da da di da di da di da. 
T. And you do it again. Da 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 da. Exactly the same timing. I know you're being very diligent because we all know if you play da 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 loud and then you play too fast, nobody will hear and you've got to get to that note. But don't do the same gesture twice. Can we do right there? Dee da dee da da. Two bars. Yeah, this is two bar ritardando. It doesn't grind to a halt, right? Yeah, just make sure that you don't get slow here, because I, I, you see the ritardando. Yeah, you see the ritardando, and you immediately you're being very good. You're scanning ahead, but you, if you take time so so early, then you can't make that two bar diminuendo sound natural. Do the same again. The first of the dotted rhythms. Take the time, now tempo. Yeah, that's that's above our original tempo. <laughs> so yeah, don't don't uh, run out of steam with the with the ritardando. Um, let's try let's try that again. Can we go from um, bar after, uh, two bars after K, the piano? scared of, of the piano dynamic here. You have more reason to be scared when he writes pianissimo morendo, but be very confident with the leading here. And again, don't get bogged down. Can we try the tempo? Really strong breathing together. Yes, can you hear the, the attack is slightly different? Dum, bum, bum. Do the same again, the tempo. Over two notes. Don't get stuck. Think again, less of the, less of the vertical, more of the horizontal here. I heard bum, 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 bum. Maybe we use a little bit less bow at the beginning, more compact stroke, and then more, more crescendo. It's good. Uh, do you have issues of playing together with these rests? I hear you still not quite breathing together. I want to do that again. Let's let's do the let's do the art tempo again. Because the art, the best way for this to, to work is for all of you to to lead equally. Yes, it's as if the rests themselves are more important, or at least as important as the notes you actually play. Do you know what I mean? To hold the tension. Let's try again, and I really want to feel you. Dun, 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 dun. Ah, that breath on the downbeat needs to be more consciously felt. Try again. You can, you can give the impression of a crescendo, not just with the volume, but with the, where you might lengthen, yum, bum, beam, lengthen the bow stroke a little bit. Otherwise, you just get dum, bum, ba. You can shape it more, in other words. Let's try again, the same way.
That's good. Now, we hear this motif how many times do you think? Apparently in Opus 18, number one, I can't remember how many times you hear team, ba -ba -ba -ba. Apparently in his manuscript, there, there were even more of them. <laughs> and he actually cut them down a bit. So one of the big problems of, or challenges of this movement is, again, I said the narrative. So it's very easy for, for you to lose the audience uh, if your sense of the forward drive of the movement or where we are in the, it's like reading Proust or Trollope or James Joyce, you know, it's very easy to, 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 to get lost and not know where we are in, in the broader shape of the movement. So sometimes it's a reminiscence, sometimes it's a driving force, sometimes it's uh, frozen. There are so many different ways in which this motif is presented. So you have to, when you're working at it, you have to think, where are we? It's like a character that's on a journey. That might be the easiest way to express it. And this is a very broad movement. So. Let's think, what are we trying to create here at one, uh, 193? What's the atmosphere? Atmosphere mm -hmm. suspended. Good. So find a color for that, and then da -da -dee -da -da. soulful, maybe. Should we try right there? OK, good. Now, what you have to work out as a quartet all the time is when you need that unified, homogenous sound. Some as you absolutely want massively contrasting textures and sounds. But here, it's got to be like a perfectly balanced choir. Could you match vibrato? OK, good, good. Now, I'll be the first to admit, when I'm worried about being together, I'll, I'll openly tell you. Uh, I, I subdivide as much as I can. <laughs> now, we shouldn't be really thinking that, but you have to be together. So what I'm hearing is that you, you lose the intensity of the long notes quite often. I would be thinking through these notes more. If you sit down on the piano and you go, da, the note, you strike the note, and then there's nothing else, or the pedal, you can't really do very much to it. But with the string, with the, with the bow, you can think through. So you've got to keep the sound really alive and br bring us in to your private world here. Cello. D sharp. That's good, okay good, yeah. I think here you could give a small crescendo here. Yeah, and the intervals, he doesn't write anything. I think you have to find the intensity here in these intervals a little bit more. So yeah, you have the most expressive interval here. Probably you and, and the first violin. So think about it. the long notes have to keep growing. Try again. Good, now, can you do it? Now, I said grow. Do it without a, a crescendo, but do it with intensity as you kind of reach for the note. Yeah, yeah good. Uh, or immediately, you, the, the vibratos aren't matching still. You, you've got to be able to, somehow right here in the middle is where the quartet unites. Do you know what I mean by that? You make that one color. Say it again. Good, good. Now, I did hear quite often, I heard the notes cut short. Try not to do that. You've got to think, to think through that. Try one more time. Yeah. 
you going? Okay, good. I think we need a little bit more arrival here. Da -da 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 fuller with that chord, and then uh, for my taste, ba -ba -ba. sounds a little bit too short and dry. Ba -ba 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 -bing -ba -ba. Try that. Let's go from L. Okay, good, good. It seems like, what do we do with this? It's like a slow trill. <laughs> if you do an equal bow like this, you won't help. Remember we talked about the shaping, the different stroke. Let's build that more. Can we do right there? Three after L. Good. Yeah, and make sure resonance, resonance. One more time. Make sure we really feel the arrival two, two beats before him. Yeah, and this rhythm, if you start, these obsessive, um, the working out obsessively of a motif. So it's like you, you keep the audience engaged because of your attitude to this. And Beethoven will do that longer than anybody else. These, can you imagine? You've gone from Haydn and Mozart, where a quartet will last about 20 minutes. 23 minutes, how long this piece takes, or the E flat, E127. So it's, a, it's your job to be able to keep the concentration, the focus of the character, so that, that the audience will not, you won't lose the audience. So there's a kind of intensity that late Beethoven demands of you, that your brain power to focus on these things over a large amount of time is what increases when you play this music. Let me try it again. Let's go from... Uh, Four before M. D. Okay, good, yeah. If you play that softly, the diminuendo, you won't get a real pianissimo at N. Like, think about the dynamic shading for a composer that is so obsessed because he can't hear anything. He's so careful here with what he writes. So piano, ten elemento, not, not, not super, super soft. In unisons, I would play a little bit more. Okay. Because you're sitting here, your sound is not gonna go out quite as strongly, so play with more substance. Should we try from um, M? Crescendo. Nothing. example in any of the pieces that, uh, from Haydn and Mozart, where you have this degree of competition amongst the players, which is basically the competition of the theme against whatever's surrounding it, you have to be more adversarial with each other. Da 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 has to be so obsessive, and da bi da da dee, which is such an uncomfortable <laughs> passage for the cello. It's like piano writing right there. And then just one person on the theme. So can we try that with the sense of Really, you have to fight with each other, and that's where the tension, the, the, the music comes out. Let's go from N to N again, pianissimo. Crescendo. Oh. 
Okay, good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can we just hear the middle voices right there from the forte? Yeah. In the other piece, the Brahms, we had a little doya 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 doya, the barriolage. I think part of the excitement comes from doya 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 doya. You know the beginning of the Grosse Fuga, it's just bam in the quartet version. In his own arrangement for the piano, the two, two, four hands, it's doya. So I, I, I often think about that. When you see something here, you could take the easy route and just ba da 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 da, wherever you can. When it's, <laughs> you'd have to do it now, but you've got to give ba da 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 da. It's got to give her a mini heart attack. <laughs> Can we try that there? Everybody, D, you know, little It's a 236. Angular as you can, uh, the Swatandi should be more, and he gives you P of 40. You thought you gave, gave everything, and there's, there's more and more. It forces you to become more, what's the word? Uh, more uh, performer with more sense of drama and of urgency. We, we're almost out of time. Let's go from to before O, oh, two, two bars. And look at these huge gaps here, to advertise them. Not too soft, tempo, leave it for later. Good place to finish. Thank you, Thank you very much. <laughs>